Hello, Facebook Live. Um, we have Lindsay Price and Craig Mason here, and we are on location for this Facebook Live. Where's the thing? It's over there. It's over right there. Here. Perfect. Okay, and we are. It's Saturday, and we are Saturday. Oh, we were gonna do this in the park. We are not in the park. We tried to go to a park, but with it was Craig and Lindsay. Yeah, it was really loud and busy in the park. So we're in New York, and so it's Saturday in the park with Craig and Lindsay. Which That's is as close that, as we which can is get. As close as we can get to talking about. This show, Sunday in the Park with George, which is what we saw. So there are three reasons we come to New York. Um, one is, as a playwright, um, New York is an observational heaven. And observation is my number one tool for writing plays. I love coming here. We walk. We observe. We listen to conversations. And um, a lot of I get a lot of playwriting um, ideas and juice. I get a lot of juice from just being in this city. Both Craig and I are like, we would never want to live here, but visiting, we're all about the visiting. There's a time to come to New York and there's a time there's to leave time New York. time to leave. Um, so that's number one. Secondly, um, we come because we, um, it's important to see theater. We are in the theater business. And even though it's, um, it's theater for youth and theater is educational theater, um, if you're in the business of theater, you need to see theater. And if you have students who are like, oh, I want to make it as an actor or as a playwright or as a director or anything in the field, the number one piece of advice you can give them is that you need to be reading plays. You need to see theater. You need to, if you're a director, you need to want to be a director. You need to see different types of direction. Mm -hmm. If you want to be an actor, you need to see different types of plays. If you're a playwright, you need to, you need to experience different types of theatrical experience. Mm -hmm. um, so we are going, and while in our time here, we are seeing uh, Broadway. Um, in about two hours, we're seeing something. Um, I'm only thinking it, mu it's, it must be off Broadway. I don't know what the Park Armory it's is. It's probably off Broadway. There's all these rules. Yeah, I know. It's not Broadway. It might be off, off. It might be off, off Broadway. And tonight, we're going to see something off, off, off Broadway. Um, it's a, uh, it used to be called Too Much Light Makes the Baby Go Blind. It's not anymore, but that's too long of a story to go into right now. But it's a sketch. It's a, it's a, it's a two-minute, they write plays every week. Mini plays, like two-minute plays. 30 plays in one hour. 30 plays in one hour. So, so we're here and we're seeing a whole bunch of different things. And the third reason we're here is that um, it's sort of on our bucket list that we are both uh, Sondheim, big Sondheim fans. And it is our bucket list that we will see all of, as many as we can, Sondheim shows. So we have seen uh, Follies. Follies, Assassins. Assassins. Um, a Little Night Music. Yes. Sweeney, Sweeney Todd. Um, and last night we saw Sunday in the Park with George. And tonight we are seeing Pacific Overtures. So it's just like it is a Sondheim Apalooza. Pacific Overtures is the get because that almost never gets performed. So yes. that's one one really. And happy we didn't to even get a to we see. didn't even plan it. The whole reason we were here is to go see uh, Sunday in the Park with George, and um, and we just so happened to be here at the same time that there's a production of Pacific Overtures. Okay, so now we're here to the point of this um, uh, Facebook Live, and that's critical thinking and play reviews. Right? If you want your students to um, take the, the whole process of a play to a, a critical thinking level, that means writing a play review. Uh, somewhere, wherever the description is, um, there is a blog post on how to write a play review. Um, and it is a, it's going to be noisy here. <laughs> That's awesome. We actually picked this the quietest spot This is the quietest spot we, spot we could find. Um, critical thinking is really important because it's, when you're seeing a play, it's not just, oh, I like that, or, oh, I didn't like that. But you have to, you have to determine why, and you also have to you have to think about a lot of factors that are going into um, the production. What is the theme of the production? What is the thesis of the director? Um, what is the staging like? Um, is what, there a fire nearby? Is there a fire? Um, is there is there what is the cohesiveness of the lights, the costuming of the tech, all the tech? Um, there, how does it all come together? How does it all come together? What is the audience response around you? What was the other critical response? And just sort of like, you know, sort of it's compare and contrast and and coming up with a point of view and um, defining your point of view and and and, and um, 
standing up for your point of view, right? It has to have all of those elements together. So here we are. We're going to talk about uh, uh, the production of Sunday in the Park uh, with George that we saw last night. So there's a lot of interesting factors about this production. So the first of all is that it actually stars, it stars a movie star. It stars Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake Gyllenhaal is uh, George Surratt, George Surratt in Sunday in the Park with George. So there was a lot of uh, interesting commentary about that because he is known as a movie star. He's a young guy. He's in his 30s, I would guess. Um, uh, and uh, lots of, uh, lots of uh, intense acting, I would say, goes on by Mr. Jake. Um, and this, so there's lots of questions, you know, can he um, withstand a Broadway run? Well, it's, the thing is, it's not, just a, it's not just a show and it's not just a role. It's, a, it's an immensely challenging role. It's one, of the, of, hardest, it's one of the hardest sings, I think, for a male in the modern musical theater. And not only that, it had a very iconic uh, uh, Broadway production with Mandy Patinkin. Mandy Patinkin and Bernadette Peters. Um, you, have you, you've never seen... It live, brought Sunday in the Park with George. No, this is the first time. This is our favorite show. Sunday in the Park with George is our favorite show. We've seen, they did it on How PBS. How do you have a favorite show that you've never seen? Well, I don't know. Now, well, now you've I'll, seen it. I, I'll tell Spoiler you why. Alert. I'll tell you why. Okay. Because, well, I saw it on PBS right. when they used to do that. Um, and I watched that many, many times. And then the music, I know many, many times. But this is an interesting thing. It's This is the difference, this is something else we'll talk about, the difference between just hearing the soundtrack and actually going to see the show and how that's really important. If you've got, you've got Hamilton kids out there who are just listening to the soundtrack over and over again, I've talked to a couple of teachers who have gone to see it and it's like, it's not the same. It's not the same. If you're in love with the show, Seeing it, you haven't seen the show until you you've seen the show. You haven't seen the show until yeah. you've seen the show. Okay, so that's the first thing. The first thing is that in this show there is a um, a high profile lead, um, and then there is some high profile theater people. Uh, her name Annabelle you? Lee Ashford. Excellent, Annabelle Lee Ashford. Uh, she won a Tony oh. for. Uh, yeah, let's make sure we get her name right. Okay, you go on. She won a Tony. She won a Tony for You Can't Take It Anna With You. Anna Lee Ashford. Anna Lee Ashford. Uh, she won a Tony for uh, You Can't Take It With You, so a comedic style. Uh, she's been on Broadway many times. She was on in Legally Blonde. Um, so she has a very specific style to her as an actor. Um, and then we have a, a, an ensemble that has, again, a lot of credibility. Um, uh, one actor who stood out to us, uh, he plays the, um, the boatsman, um, mm. and he, was, he got a Tommy nominee for Porgy and Bess, um, and he was in Showboat. Just a powerful, powerful actor. Um, the director of this is the, um, she's the daughter... The daughter of the librettist. Yes, of James Lapine. So, um, Lapine, so, I think. Lapine, yeah. thank you. So that's some crit. So there's some some things happening there. So we have a, a director with who has some a connection to the piece. Um, we have a film actor, um, uh, and we have a, a whole lot of Broadway a performers. A whole lot of Broadway performers. Um, and the reviews. And let's talk about the reviews. The New York Times review of this play was uh, loving. So that's something. Um, and we looked, and, and we could only find one one, one, crit- one really one critical, critical review. review. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's the background. So that's something that you want to make sure that if you've got your students who are writing a play or play review, what's the background of this piece, right? What what do you know? What can you know going in, right? You don't want to know the whole story. You know, in movies, the, the trailer tells us everything, but uh, for a play, you just that's kind of a background thing that you want to know going in. Okay, so, uh, and as we're doing this, if you have things that you have your students do when they write a play review, put it in the comments. Share it with anyone who catches this, uh, catches this video. Okay, so um, in one sentence, Craig Mason, what, was your re- what is your opinion of, of seeing Sunday in the Park with George last night? Um, I, I fell in love more with the show than I thought I would. But was this, I'm still in a sentence here. I haven't hit my period yet. It's got a butt. Uh, yeah. Um, however, I think I'll still see a much stronger production in, in, in my lifetime. I agree. Um, of being someone who has never seen it live but has, I've got a copy of the, the, the libretto. I have listened to the music you, so many you times. You wore your tape out. I wore my tape out. I've seen the, I, on, on video, I've seen the original production. This was not a defining production for me, but it defined. This is my favorite. This is my favorite mm-hmm. Sondheim show. 
Yeah, for anyone who's familiar with the show, I, I think it's kind of widely acknowledged that the second act is not as strong as the first. It was really interesting and seeing it. I didn't, I didn't, um, I came away, I came away with a much greater appreciation of the second act. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's really because the first act really is a one act play. It's actually, it's actually very similar, and it was written around the same time as uh, a play most more people would be familiar with, Into the Woods, where the first act is like a perfect one-act play, and then there's a second act that kind of dives back in and re-examines that material. Yep. And I think a lot of people struggle with that second act and the way things change. And the same with this show. The first act is like a perfect one-act musical, and then there's this second act that I, I think people have the impression is tacked on or doesn't doesn't help. How, how, but but in this particular, I don't know if it was this production or what. But I really found that that second act did did really go did did take me to a place that I wasn't expecting, and yeah. that, that I wanted to a journey that I wanted to go on. Yeah, me too. Uh, uh, that, I'm going to say that this is the exact same uh, response that I have. So this is what what do you want? Get your get your students when they're writing a review of something. So you know what is their what is their capsule review. And then they're going to have to, what is their thesis? And then they're going to have to prove it. Um, and mine is, I love, I, I realized, I really realized my love for this show, um, musically and book-wise. I think the book is great. We were both talking about how much the book, as in the dialogue, is referenced in the songs. Mm -hmm. It was referenced in the singing. And that means that there was great co collaboration going on between Sondheim and Time, mm -hmm. um, and that so that means that there was a great um, there was great cohesion. Yeah, knowing um, knowing the soundtrack so well, it was fascinating to watch the dialogue, and there'd be little phrases, little sentences that you go, "Oh, that's going to come back in later." You know, it's going to come back in because you know the song. But it's just really interesting to see that interplay between the composer and the librettist. And we had a long conversation before we saw the, the book show, writer. the book writer, about we, what we think the theme of the play is. Um, and I think in seeing the play, the theme is children and art, life and art. It's not children or art. It's not life or art. It's like, where is that balance between okay. between the two? And legacy. And legacy. Mm -hmm. and kind of encompasses both. Encompasses right? both, right. The whole notion of an art piece being forever. And it's very interesting in the top of Act 2 about how the, 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 the people in the painting are complaining about being in the painting and this is not the way they want to be remembered and it's hot and it's and the, their legacy is is not what they wanted it, it was imposed on them um, and that the legacy that children brings right you know that, that you're passed down from generation to generation and there's one point where um, uh, in the present not the present but in the second act where the modern George is sort of being um, a little bit na uh, needled by his grandmother about how she, she hoped that they would have children and to you know, this is the this is our family. This is the lot. Mm -hmm. You know, once I'm gone, this is all that we've got, Georgie. Um, so that's interesting. So that so just the whole notion of the script. It was written in '83. I think it really holds up. Absolutely, as yeah. a piece. Yeah, I think uh, yeah. And the second act was still set in '83. It right? was still set in '83. Yeah. I they, was there a cell phone or something? Or there was some no. no okay, there was, was a else. weird. Okay. There, was there was a, a weird, weird moment selfie that I, moment that I thought was like, mm, yeah, that's too modern. But, yes, so, yes. Yeah. Okay, so so that's one aspect. We're looking at the script as as in terms of critical thinking of the script. And um, when you're taught, when you're getting your students to critically think about a piece, you know, you have to separate. Is it? And if you didn't like it, it was it the script that you didn't like. Was it the performance that you didn't like? Was direction. it the direction that you didn't like? Mm -hmm. Was it the technical aspects that you didn't like? You can't just say you didn't like. There are so many... Theater, as we know, is a collaborative act. There's so many things going on. Okay, so that is the the piece. Let's talk about the direction. Okay. Um, you start. We feel, well, I think we both feel we're not sure about the direction. We I think we feel that, that some actors were left to their own devices I think she was very it felt very hands off um, I, there were times yeah. where performers one in particular seemed to not have anything to well, do beyond be, you know well Jake Gyllenhaal, Jake Gyllenhaal often <laughs> seemed to have no I don't I don't know if he didn't take direction or wasn't given direction or there wasn't there were some there was there were there were frequent opportunity there were frequent moments in the show where he was alone and didn't really to me, seemed to know what it was that he was supposed to be doing at yeah. that time. Which uh, was it it really was surprising strange. to see him be have wanderitis. Wanderitis, yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal had wanderitis, like yeah. you wouldn't believe, and that's a basic, right? That is a basic technical theater thing, because then it makes you start looking at all the other actors, and there was nobody else who was uh, who had that affliction. Mm -hmm. um, 
And then there were lots of other pieces where the other actors on stage had really strong, silent, physical moments. And it just makes you start to think, did they make those moments for themselves? You know, did they decide that they, that, and in character, right? And I think this is going to go into my thoughts on the difference in the acting section. Um, but there were some real strong character, silent, driven moments, uh, physical moments, right? So they weren't taking away from the action, but they were making sure that they, they had something to do. And that kind of lends one to think that, um, that the director was more hands-off. And I think that's what a, an experienced stage actor brings to a production, yes. is that they they look at a scene and go, okay, what am I doing, what am I trying to accomplish in this scene, and what am I doing while I'm trying to accomplish that? And and I think, yeah, and I think that's what we were missing from Mr. Gyllenhaal was, was that notion. There, when, when he didn't have anything specifically to do in the script except think or wonder or yearn, that was, we didn't get anything else from him except a, I am thinking now, I am yearning now, I am writing now, I am, mm -hmm. I am painting now. Mm -hmm. There was never, I never felt like a full, a fullness of, of the life beyond that. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I, I don't know if that was, I don't know if that was just him or his lack of ex his stage experience or, um, or the director not helping out there or scared mm -hmm. to help, like, or scared to give direction to the big star. Yep. Right? Who yep. Knows? Who knows? We, we will never know. This is only what, and then this, this is, is only just speculation. Is, I mean, well, we're based just on looking, what, yeah. based on what we see, based <laughs> on our experience, that's the only thing you can do when you're critically thinking about a piece that you're seeing. You, this is what you're bringing to the table, right? This is what you are inferring based on what you see. Um, and and I'm going to say, I don't know if there was a cohesive vision in the whole technical side. So that means to me that the director didn't give a cohesive vision. I think there was a cohesive vision with the costumes. Mm -hmm. I think there was a cohesive vision with the sound. I think there was a cohesive vision with the light, which I didn't quite agree with. But that, you know, like cohesiveness means that all of the pieces are coming together. To work as a whole. To work mm -hmm. as a whole. Mm -hmm. okay. There are lots of amazing technical Individual elements. elements. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, and now let's start, move on to the acting. So let's, so let's make sure that we are highlighting um, some of the really great things that we saw in this production. And that means the ensemble um, and uh, the woman who played Dot, again, Dot is a, it was originated, it was an iconic role from Bernadette Peters, and my feeling is that, what's her name please? Annalie Ashford. Ashford. Miss Ashford um, held her own. I think she made it her own. Yeah. Um, knowing the original soundtrack so well, it was, she made decided choices to make her own path in the show. Yep. Uh, moments that are so so ingrained in that soundtrack, she decidedly chose not to do them. The the yep. end of the Louis the Baker song, yep. where Bernadette Peters stuffed the roll in her mouth. Yep. She didn't. She stuffed it in at the end of the song. You know what I mean? Like, it's well, and she stuffed it in, and then she took it out. Yeah. Um, and also, there's a moment. Well, there's a moment that that Bernadette Peters also did. Uh, there's a moment when they're all in the picture, and uh, Jules is beside her and says, "You know, I hope you don't mind my cigar. It never goes out because they're in the painting." And he says, "You have wonderful concentration." And she gives a look to the audience. And I remember from the video, Bernadette Peters was a very coquettic sort of look to the audience and a wink. And and uh, Miss Ashford, Ashford's was a was a slow look and then a an eye flash. And she just like that is some skill, man. To like I'm, we were in the top of the balcony and she eye flashed and I'm like I caught that eye flash. Like that's 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 something. And also a great difference between her and Bernadette Peters is uh, so at the same actor plays um, so she plays Dot. In the first act, but in the second act, she plays her. Uh, she plays Dot's daughter. Dot's daughter, who is then G modern Georgia's grandmother. She's 98. Yeah. And in the original, um, uh, Bernadette Peters played it as, as Bernadette Peters, as Bernadette Peters always does. And in this production, Annalie Anna Ashford played it as a Southern woman with 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 a steel rod. Like she had, she had, she was taking no guff from nobody. Steel Magnolias. She was Steel Magnolias all the way. She had the accent. And the thing that we discussed, which was really interesting, is that in the song Children and Art, that you felt that it actually was written in a, the song was written in a Southern accent. Uh, yeah, I, I, I actually think she illuminated the fact that that song is written in a, it, it, it's, it's written in a much different style than a lot of the other songs in the show. And it's a real lazy Southern 
um, southern cadence. yeah cadence yeah and she really milked that cadence to really help illuminate the song I thought and I, I, I was trying to decide oh have they manipulated the song to fit this or is that what the song was intended to be and I really they, they, they hit so hard that she she was she was raised in South Carolina yep. that I felt that oh it must have been the intention of Sondheim for that to be a more lugubrious yeah. song yeah. yeah so fascinating there again so we're talking about we're talking about critical thinking we're talking about a play review we were we are reviewing um, we're trying to be criti really critically thinking about Sunday in the Park with George if you have any um, tips or hints about how to get your students to write comprehensive critical thinking um, really um, inferring what they see and, and, and backing up their opinions of, of play reviews Put it down in the comments. You'll also find in the description, and we're in New York right now, it's quite loud. Um, there's always ambulances. Uh, this it, Facebook Live is so hot. It's they so hot. It's the, so, that's they right. they got to send the popo. Uh, so, and there's also a link to a blog post on how to write a play review. All you need to do is click the link and you can download it. Um, okay, so now let's talk about, uh, so that's, a, that's Dot. Um, I thought that the ensemble was quite vibrant. Yes, the ensemble was universally stellar. Yeah. They, they were worth the price of admission yeah. in and of themselves. Uh, not a, not, a, not a, a moment out of note, not, not, a, not a character thrown away. Every, and, every character, no matter how small, was just richly developed. Even, even the character that isn't even really in the, in there, the play. There's a okay, so in the original, there's a character, there's two soldiers. And the, and the joke is, is that the soldier is with a cardboard cutout of the second soldier. You know, so there's a moment where the two, there's two girls who are trying to date the soldiers. And uh, one of them says, I don't like the other. Well, I don't, you can have the other. I don't want the other. Well, you, I don't want the other either because he's a cardboard cutout. He's boring. He's boring. And in this production, there was actually a guy. <laughs> Who was a mute. Who was a mute and, and kind of a cardboard cutout. And there was a moment where he was alone at the back. It's my favorite thing. My favorite thing is to watch the ensemble, man. And, there was a, he, and he, he was walking towards the stage, and there was a step. And it was like you could see his brain go, what is this step? I don't know what I don't know what this is. My friend isn't here to help me, and he turned around and he just didn't go. He didn't go and step on the step. It was a pure character moment. Um, there's the woman who plays the fancy, the, the well-known um, artist's wife, hmm. and she was just she she has very little to say, but she was brittle and she was very clear, um, you know, that she had a veneer and that there was something under the veneer. And then in the second act, she plays um, George's composer. And she has, again, very little to say, but oh my God, she was my favorite part of act two. Like, she was just so, she was the brittle artist. You know, instead of being the brittle artist's wife, she was the brittle artist. Uh, I just loved it. My favorite character was, in the first act, he played the, the, boatman, the boatman, which in the painting, he represents, like, the lowest the of class. the lowest working class in, in, uh, in Paris. And he had this deep, basso profundo voice. You just crave man. to see him do man. you just crave to see him sing old man river that type of guy oh, this great. deep deep guy and in the second half what, what was his character he was an he arts, was the publicist uh, publicist that's and right he was and well, let's say it he was a stereotype and he, he came in as an over-the-top like mincing publicist like he, his so, voice was pitched two octaves higher than it was in the first act and it was just it, it was, was really, just it was, it was just beautiful you know well, yeah, it was yeah. clearly a choice yeah yeah you know absolutely. the guy made a choice i'm going to be this in the first act and then i'm going to be this in the second act and just like what a great thing to see and then there is a uh, there's a whole thing in the second act about there are some artists who are very jealous of George. Um, there's a man who's very jealous of George because he was yeah he was he was on top and now he's not anymore. Mm -hmm. And there's a girl who very clearly used to date the guy who was on top and now she's like with George. And and it, none of this is in the text. Well, it's kind of, but it's like it was all very physical. Mm -hmm. It was all very just actors actors doing their job. Mm -hmm. Actors doing their job and. So we don't want to say that Mr. Gyllenhaal wasn't doing his job, because that's not true. And we don't want to say that he wasn't trying. And we don't want to say that he couldn't sing well. He sang well, he tried, he, he did his job, and he tried. But there is a difference between I am trying to act and I am a character. We saw the brush strokes. You saw the work, yes. and that and that's what you didn't see from anyone else. And I, I think anywhere else, his his performance would have been absolutely beautiful and and, and, and great. It's Broadway, However, man. in the context of this production and the strength of both uh, Dot and and the rest of the ensemble, I 
I don't feel like he held up his part of the the bargain. And I mean, to be fair, to be fair to him, it really is. It's an intensely challenging role. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a first of all, it's a, it's a terribly difficult sing. It's, 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 it's got to be the hardest sing in in musical theater. And, it, and it's, it's also it's an intensely character. difficult char- character. He's a, his, especially in the first act, his character. His whole journey is about how he's insular and can't reach out on an emotional level to his partner, and 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 so he certainly did that. But he, the but challenge then, with that role is he, in some way, he has to connect to the audience. He it's Sunday in the Park with George. We have to go on the journey with him, and if he's so shut off that we don't care if he gets together with Dot, we don't care if he finishes the painting, then that's a, that's a big problem. And that's, that's, that was my struggle with his performance. And I think that that's where we come down on this, and it all comes down to communication. Mm-hmm. Everyone on that stage, except for him, communicated with the audience. And it's really interesting. I, I've, I've just finished a big adjudication project. I've seen, like, I've seen a ton of shows in the past four months. And it all come, for me, it's all come down to communication with the audience. How are they communicating with me? Mm. And what is that relationship like? And there is a point uh, in the act two <coughs> where the entire cast comes down and, it, and they all say, and that is the state of the art. And, they, and, on the, and it's like, and that is the state of the, and everyone <coughs> turns to the audience. And he was the only one who never made eye contact. And I'm like, I don't know what this has to do with him being a a very, very famous film actor, and he's had lots of problems, and he's had to shut that aspect off because otherwise he gets he gets eaten alive. Well, that's fine, but that's not that's not the job here. The job here is actually to to talk to me, to us, and to communicate to us. And let's say there were lots of people around us who felt that the show hit them, right? I don't think so. Oh, you don't think so? There was no sniffling during Move On. Uh, all right, okay, but we've we've read lots of reviews of people being really overwhelmed by this show, and we were not overwhelmed by this show, um, in a way that theater has that capacity to. Because I didn't, I think that Could was have been it. an off night. Yeah, there's two. There's only they're at the end of their they're run. At the end of the run, maybe he's shut up. Maybe he's, maybe he's decided it's maybe over. He's done. Maybe he's done. I don't know. You know. You know. You see, re- you read wonderful reviews. And then it's like, well, that's always at the beginning. And maybe it was exciting and new, and maybe he is tired of uh, eight week run, eight, and, eight day, eight, 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 eight shows eight a week. Eight shows a week, and you see it on the other side too. You read a bad review, and you see the show, and you go, "It's wonderful." Oh, well, that meant like maybe they weren't really ready for opening, and now they've gelled and it's come together. It's so it's it's it, you're always seeing. And that's another thing I'd say about about critically analyzing um, theater, especially because you're always seeing a new show every day. Is it, and that's the yep. way it should be, really. You're, you're not seeing the same show and you weren't sitting in the same seats and you weren't you know you didn't have the same perspective and you didn't have the same day that the reviewer had before they walked into the theater it, 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 it's it's really what I love about the theater it's just how different it is every time from every seat and it's it's the, the zen thing about stepping into the same river you know it's 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 just always it's just always different and it's alive and I and for that reason I just I just love going mm-hmm so uh, critical thinking play reviews please go and uh, download the uh, how to write a play review it's very specifically written for students and, and student writers this critical thinking piece is an excellent thing to bring into um, your classroom to get them critically thinking about the plays they see and to for them to be able to define if they like something if they don't like something why and to really start to pinpoint what it is they're seeing, what is, or what is the theme of what they're seeing, what is the vision of what they're seeing, is that vision successfully um, presented? Um, and to always keep in mind, if theater is a live thing, theater changes all mm. the time. If you have great hits, hints and tips about how to write a play review, please put them in the comments, share them with others. So this was just our, sorry dear, this was just our one experience on one day of seeing a show. And you may have seen the same show and you'd have been like, these people are crazy. They don't know anything. And it's like, one day, one show. And your experience can be completely different. And if it was, please go ahead and share it, right? This is the whole point of critical thinking is that we get into the mindset that um, we have an opinion, we infer specific things based on what we see, and we back up what we think of what we think of what we see. And I think that's what's really uh, important about doing something like this with your students is to acknowledge, and this is this is really important, especially in these days of standardized testing, to acknowledge that there is no right and there is no wrong. It's 
what is your opinion and how did you how did you support how mm-hmm. can you support that opinion yep it's it has nothing to do with there's, right and wrong. there's no right or wrong there's no this is a good show this is a bad show it's only your own experience and so I think that that the, the whole critical thinking analysis aspect of this is uh, super important because it really does emphasize that there really is no right or wrong here and I think kids are so bashed over the head that there's o- there's a right answer and a wrong answer I mean they're told this over and over again multiple choice tests and I, that's what's beautiful about what you guys are doing in your theater classrooms is that you're showing you are showing that there is no right or wrong all the time. It's never black and white, and it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Well, that's a wonderful thing to end on. All right, so you go have a beautiful day. We're going to go see more shows. and uh, <laughs> Maybe we'll talk about maybe it. Maybe we'll talk about We're it. We're going to go see a show with the largest turntable in the history of New York theater, I know. 55 tons of steel. We're going to so. see the Harry. We, and here's the interesting. So we're going to go see a show. So Sunny in the Park with George, we knew. We're going to go see the Harry Ape by Eugene O'Neill. We know nothing. I've never read the play. I know nothing. I know I know the, the, the capsule version of it. I've so, heard the soundtrack a few times. <laughs> no soundtrack. So we're going to go see something that we know nothing about, and that is truly, truly an exciting thing. All right. Have a good day.